डॉक्टर मोरे वाइस चांसलर शिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी भगत सिंह पाटिल चेयरमैन बोर्ड ऑफ गवर्नर्स माय गुड फ्रेंड जयंत राव हुज ऑफर आई कुड नॉट रिफ्यूज द डायरेक्टर बोर्ड ऑफ गवर्नर्स टीचर्स पेरेंट्स ग्रेजुएटिंग क्लास एंड फ्रेंड्स इट्स इंडीड अ ग्रेट ऑनर फॉर मी to follow in the steps of uh, Mr. Ratan Tata, Dr. Yadav, as well as uh, Dr. Mashelkar, who was here, I understand, last year. And uh, I'm also uh, very happy to be here because uh, it was many years ago that I first met uh, Adarniya Rajaram Bapu Patil. It was at a wedding. Uh, the person who got married is also sitting, I think, in the audience. Or maybe it was his brother. Uh, but that was the one and only time that i met him but you know i went around your institute today and i'm sure he would have been so proud of what both his sons have achieved an institution in rural maharashtra uh, which is definitely one of the best in india and aspiring for world class so my uh, best wishes to be to accept the challenge uh, thrown by the vice chancellor of uh, shivaji university and i'm sure with uh, effort and with the guidance of the board of governors it won't be long before you achieve this i said that i couldn't uh, say no to uh, my good friend because very soon after he became minister he may not remember it i went and saw him and i told his secretary i just want to meet Uh, Jain Trap, and uh, that was the day of the cabinet meeting. He was Minister of Finance, and uh, so I went to his office, and they said he's in the cabinet meeting. So I said, no, no, I'll I'll then go back to Pune because in those days it was very difficult to go back to Pune. But uh, he said, no, uh, come to his office, and you know, the office of any Maharashtra minister has 30 chairs in front, and all of them were occupied. and uh, so i looked at it i did a double take and i said should i really go in because it's going to be he's going to meet so many people before he meets me so i might as well run away to pune he, i was put in a small room next door and i was very surprised and happy that he saw me that day and saved so much time so thank you very much i don't think i have said no many times to you uh, let me also uh, congratulate really what has been shown to me today congratulate the institute on what has been shown to me today uh, the dedication and the passion of the uh, board of governors as well as the teachers uh, really come shining through the innovative projects that i saw uh, in all fields uh, my congratulations to the students uh, who have done that i'm sure there's a great future ahead for you jaintra mentioned about Uh, his pride at going for the graduation of his uh, two sons i also had uh, the opportunity to go for the graduation of my son and daughter and it's really uh, something that's moving someone you've seen uh, grow up uh, achieve something uh, pursuing his dream or her dream as in the case of my daughter uh, and i know it's a very important uh, moment for parents and i would like you students to remember the hard work that has been put in by your parents uh, to put you through uh, this institution uh, remember that always and the work that you do later on in life should be work to honor whatever they have done for you the uh, opportunities that are there in rural areas i think this is one area that we don't look at uh, very often uh, many times there are problems uh, we try and get western solutions for those problems but people like us who face these problems every day are probably the best equipped to find solutions and these like some of the ideas that i saw at the exhibition can be the basis for innovation can be the basis for multinational corporations and i think this is something that and a problem that is sorted out in india uh, which has a population of 1.6 billion uh, 1.2 billion people uh, 
could be the solution for problems uh, that are there in China, that are there in Africa, in other developed parts of developing parts of the world. And I think look at that opportunity uh, rather than the opportunity of uh, doing something that has already been decided by others. As far as uh, the world now from this afternoon or from tomorrow, uh, you know, what lies ahead really is something that uh, your parents probably could not think about, probably could not dream about. What you can do with technologies that have been developed in the last 30 years since they graduated. The world has become a much smaller place. And technology, as Jayantrao mentioned, keeps moving. Uh, there's nothing that you can do to stop it. Yes, human touch may be lost a uh, little bit, but it's up to us humans to make sure that we still stay connected. We still stay connected with each other. We still make sure that we care for each other because that is the most important part about being a human being. But in all fields, and especially as this is a school of uh, engineering, uh, there are so many opportunities available. When I go to uh, uh, MIT once a year for our meetings, I'm struck by the fact that companies like GE are not there anymore. It's not the mechanical engineering or the electrical engineering companies that are based there anymore. All around GE now we see biotech companies. And slowly but surely, biotechnology and the merging or you know, doing two subjects together, uh, bringing, uh, come out, you, you come out with different ideas uh, when you do that. Uh, you have to make sure that all the current technologies are there in your products. And you see the world moving at a faster place, pace. For me, it's not only mechanical, but it's also electrical, electronic, telecommunication uh, technology that needs to be considered when we need to develop new products. And therefore, this merging or this convergence of different kinds of technologies is where the ideas are going to come from for the future. In uh, manufacturing itself, you know, people talk about uh, Industry 4.0, lean manufacturing, uh, the Internet of Things. And that is going to affect our country. We are going to have to become a more skilled country as far as the education levels are concerned. I was explaining to the board this morning that in our Kirloskwadi plant, we have probably one of the world's largest 3D printers. And this is actually for printing large sand molds, uh, which, with which we can eliminate the pattern making process, we can eliminate uh, a large amount of machining, and deliver products to customers, very large products to customers, much quicker than anyone else in the world. And that's how, with the new technologies that are being developed, anyone, regardless of how big or how small he is, can leapfrog over competition and gain uh, a very good position in the world. We have to fly in, because the roads are so bad, uh, we have to fly in a lot of guests every week uh, to our plant to see this plant and some of you may have already seen it but it exports something like 40% of its output. So even from India there are companies like ours who can do a lot of work globally and the concern for me especially as I'm in a rural area my factory is in a rural area actually other than the city of Devas which is a small town in Madhya Pradesh, every single factory of Kirloos Brothers is in a rural area. And the concern is that if I have to compete with the best in the world, and the best in the world are in Japan or America or Western Europe, where there are few people and technologies are being developed to have as few people as possible, I cannot compete with a large manufacturing force. And therefore, I'm so happy to see this engineering college uh, with a wide range of uh, you know, disciplines that it covers because now we are going to have to fight in a different way, not with uh, brawn, but with brain, right? And this is what is going to take us forward. I think us Indians are blessed by having good brain power, uh, whether it was mathematics where Indians 
invented the number zero. Uh, from then on, uh, India has been known for a large number of things. And I'd like to bring to everyone's notice that other than the last 300 years, actually, ever since the British first started coming in, India has been a manufacturing nation. India has always been a manufacturing nation. In the year 1700, India's GDP was something like 20% of the global GDP, gross domestic product. If you look at metallurgy, for example, there is a pillar near the Qutub Minar which hasn't rusted for more than 2,500 years. We, at that time, could make iron which couldn't rust, which would not rust. If you look at textiles, ships used to come from Rome and Greece to buy muslin. And the price of muslin in Rome around 2,000 years ago was equal to an ounce of gold. An ounce of muslin for an ounce of gold. That was how much it was desired. If you look at construction, I am sure most of you have seen the Taj Mahal. What we could build close to 500 years ago has still, is still the most beautiful building in the world. We talk about Make in India for Defense. And this is one uh, story I like to tell in America. You know, their uh, national anthem is called the Star Spangled Banner. And there are two things connected with India and weapons in the Star Spangled Banner. Because it describes the bombardment of a fort, a fort near Baltimore. And it mentions the use of rockets. These rockets were fired from a ship called the HMS Minden. The HMS Minden was built in Mumbai by Mr. Wadia's ancestors. In fact, the oldest ship afloat in Britain, the HMS Trincomalee, was also built by Mr. Wadia. And the line, the rockets led a red glare, bombs bursting in air. The rockets were actually rockets built in Britain in a factory that was transported from Mysore. Because Tipu Sultan used rockets against the British in the first, second, third, and fourth Anglo-Mysore wars. They didn't have, they, they defeated him in the end, but they took his rocket factory and improved upon it. And in the War of 1812, when the Star Spangled Banner was written, they used it amongst, against the Americans. So I'm sure that, you know, let us remember that all through history, we have no equal. And it is the job of our generation and the next generation to make sure that we get back to where we were 300 years ago. I want to talk about two more things. Patriotism and ethics. Samuel Johnson, who was a celebrated British author or a writer, said that patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel. And nowadays, when uh, you see whether it is in America or many countries around the world, in Western Europe, the nationalism that you see, I'm sure most of you read newspapers, magazines. I'd like you to remember uh, something called the Pledge. And that used to be in my uh, textbooks in the school in Pune. I believe it might have been in most textbooks. I hope it is still there in all textbooks, whether in English or in Marathi. And I'm going to read it out, because I hope some of you, most of you will remember it. And it goes, India is my country. All Indians are my brothers and sisters. I love my country and I am proud of its rich and varied heritage. I shall always strive to be worthy of it. I shall give my parents, teachers, and all elders respect and treat everyone with courtesy. To my country and my people, I pledge my devotion. In their well-being and prosperity alone lies my happiness. I hope this was there for you because it was there for us when I was in school. As the world gets more and more independent, interdependent, 
And as you see more and more foreign companies coming here, remember that there are Indian companies also that are competing with them. And remember that you belong to this country. Because that is the best thing you can do for your country and your people. As uh, there's one line which says, I'm proud of its rich and varied heritage. You know, we are, we are so lucky. As, as a company, as a multinational company, we have to deal with so many different cultures. Whether it's a factory in America or South Africa, which has had its own history, or Thailand, everyone needs to get along. Everyone needs to get along with each other. And we have to see how we adjust to one another, remembering that we are one race, finally, that came out of Africa. Right? We are, we are not different. And with diversity, with diversity of people, diversity of ideas, you can build far better organizations, far better products as you go along. Ethics, what are ethics? Moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the con conducting of an activity. I think all of us have an inner voice, something our parents try to nurture in us, sometimes gently, sometimes with a little force. Do what is right. You know what, when, when an action has to be taken, it's very clear in your own mind what is right and what is wrong. Try to go on the right path. I can assure you, you will sleep well. Because that's what's most important if you want to do a good job the next day. Every individual in this world can change the world. And we've so, seen so many heroes amongst us. Whether it was Mahatma Gandhi, or whether it was Steve Jobs, or Bill Gates, one individual can change the way the rest of us, all the rest of us operate. And I'm sure that there will be students from here who will be doing that in future. Make your parents proud with what you do. Make your country proud of what you do. And finally, and now this is where the parents may not like me, uh, do what makes you happy. Chase your dream. You may fail. Failure is a great learning experience. Don't feel upset. Move on. We are told move on. You, know, you may make more mistakes, but you will learn a lot. And this is what is most important, and this is what keeps us apart uh, or distinguishes us from other mammals. Thank you uh, for the honor that you have bestowed upon me today. And let me also end with uh, a quote like you did, uh, which is of Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you. <laughs>